Since the Power Saver Plug scammers are using content from my videos once again out of context to promote their products, I thought let's make another debunking video about the incredible power saving plug. Plug it in and save lots of electricity. Your bill will drop in an amazing manner, apparently. So this is the neatest one I've come across so far. It's very stylish. Unfortunately, its use as a project case is slightly hobbled in the UK by the fact that the earth pin is actually too short and not the proper thickness. They've just basically used one standard pin for them all. They seem to do that a lot. Let's uh, bring in a socket. I should bring in the hoppy. I should bring in the hoppy. One moment, please. I shall use the anti version of the meter for this because it has one slight advantage over the hoppy. It's better at displaying weird power factors, which is what you'd expect out of these things. So I'm plugging in this uh, shady adapter and I shall plug this plug in. And the first thing we get is a little flickery. It doesn't need to flicker. It could be brighter. It's just what it is. And this thing is showing a current of 157 milliamps, a power factor of 0 0.01. So it does have a capacitor in it. Um, and a power of 0.4 watts, which is really just the LED. The 157 milliamps is just apparent power because they have used a capacitor in this. That's reassuring. I wonder if it has a discharge resistor. Yes, it does. That's nice. So let's get that out of the way. And take a closer look at this. I shall bring the meter in, in fact. I'll just make sure that is totally discharged. And we'll set it to 200 microfarad. Now, what these units do just to justify their existence is they do often have a capacitor in it, sometimes not connected. This one has a 2 microfarad capacitor in it, which is nice that it's connected, but that does itself often pose a fire hazard. Now, this thing, nice case, that the label is horrible. It's really squint and off-center. Which is a shame, because otherwise it looks quite smart. There is a label covering a screw hole. Through we go. And out comes the one screw that holds this together. I'm excited to see if it uses the standard circuit board or default the circuit board. It's super simple. There is our capacitor. Oh, there's the really blobby solder joints. Some of these units, uh, just to for appearance, they have a fake capacitor filled with sand with a little bit of resin. Let's pop this out. Oh, no, it's the super luxury surface mount version. Oh, wow. Uh, right. One moment, please. I'm just going to doodle this down. OK, there's not much to see. There is a very hot resistor. The incoming supply has the capacitor tapped across it. There is no fuse other than the wiring. The wiring is quite thin, so there's a very good chance that in the event of a significant fault, the wiring would actually blow like a fuse. This is probably good in a way, but not really professional. Nice case. It is designed to take this size of capacitor pa package. There is a seemingly pointless 100 ohm resistor, and then another 100 ohm resistor, and then the LED, which is the green LED, uh, gallium phosphide probably. They couldn't really use gallium nitride because uh, they don't like being reverse biased. And it is being, basically, it's going into its reverse bias mode. It's it, having its peak reverse voltage exceeded. I'll zoom down this a little bit. And uh, it is conducting the opposite direction for half the time. Then there's this, res this resistor here, which is doing the bulk of the current limiting through that LED. And as such, this resistor is actually getting very hot. And then there's a 1 megohm resistor. It's nice round values, 100, 100, 100k, 1 megohm. Uh, and that uh, kind of, it's not really needed, but I suppose it provides a secondary path other than the LED for discharging this capacitor when the power is unplugged. Having said that, if this resistor does burn out, because this one is quite stressed, uh, then it will remove that uh, discharge protection. The capacitor could hold a charge. You could get a tingle of the pins. Uh, the best improvement they could make, the cheapest improvement in this, is just to put a standard one amp diode or uh, any just about any diode in series with this LED a 1N4007 type diode, and that would have half the dissipation from this resistor. Uh, the capacitor is unmarked. This is not really a surprise. It will be the cheapest they could get because really the people that are making these things are not very, not really interested in safety or anything like that. They're really just wanted to bang them out. I am surprised it's actually connected. That's quite, quite unusual with these. So uh, the, the risk with these things is they don't really do much. They they pretend to be 
power saving devices. It's based very loosely on power factor correction, but that wouldn't really apply to the standard domestic supply. And also the capacitor for power factor correction, it tends to be purely inductive loads like big transformers or motors. The capacitor has to be attached to that load uh, so that when that load is active, the capacitor is improving its power factor, but that's not really monitored by domestic supplies. In this case, though, because they've used a generic cheap capacitor and the favourite mode of these capacitors is sometimes flames, um, I'd say plugging this in your house is uh, probably more at risk of actually setting fire to your house than anything else. It's certainly not going to save power. All it will have done is cost you uh, money for buying it in the first place and given you a false peace of mind that you know you're somehow saving power. So that is it. It's just another one of these uh, scammy... Uh, power saving plugs quite a smart one I will say it's quite a stylish case the way it's coloured but uh, the circuitry is up to the usual low standards and uh, it's the same fire hazard that many of them are